What's up everyone, Willy Apple here, and today Apple has released the release candidate of macOS 13. In this video, I'll be showing you what is new in the release candidate. So if we were to take a look at how much the update took. So the update only took 1.07 gigabytes on my M1 MacBook Air. So Apple only adds the changes inside of the release candidates of macOS. So that's why the file size is a lot lower than iOS this time around. Now, while we don't have some major changes, we got a couple of minor changes inside of system settings. So if we were to take a look at general and about, you can see that the build number is not here. But upon clicking it, you'll notice that we now have our build number. So Apple decided to hide this to make it so you need to click it in order to get the build number, which is kind of similar to old fashioned iOS, but nowadays it just opens up a brand new menu when tapping on it. If we were to take a look at our Safari right here and show our build numbers, only two of the apps got updated right here and it's Safari and Mail. So it was likely just bug fixes since only the, these two numbers change. If we were to take a look at our Apple Silicon firmware version right here, it is exactly the same. It is 8419.41.10. Now unfortunately, we do not get any more bug fixes until we get 13.1 or 13.0.1 which I kind of doubt we'll get a 13.0.1 to be honest, since macOS is usually very smooth. So we do got the same remaining issues, and if I had to guess, all of these issues down here are still not fixed inside of the release candidate. Oh yeah, and just to let you know, Apple has confirmed this issue is not fixed, where alarms would not play inside of the clock app, but hopefully we get a bunch of fixes in the coming weeks. Oh yeah, and just to let you know, we have a confirmed release date for macOS Ventura, and it's on the 24th right here. If we had to guess when the next set of betas would be, I'd have to say on the 25th right here, and that's where we would get out the long-awaited Freeform app for the Mac and iPad. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot inside of macOS, but I'm gonna take a quick Geekbench test. On beta 11, we got a 1754 on the single core and a 7662 on the multi-core. Taking a look at this, we got a 1752 on the single core, and that is too lower right here, and it's 7739 on the multi-core, which is a lot higher right here. This is our best one, 7778, so it's honestly on par with that. So my Mac did feel a little bit hot, like just a little bit, because I am using OBS rather than the built-in recorder. So that could also be affecting the scores a little bit right here. So really good job, Apple, with keeping this up right here. Now we also got a couple of new Apple products that Apple has released. We got a brand new iPad 10 with support for USB-C and this keyboard right here, and this kickstand as well. Brand new M2 iPad Pro, and a brand new Apple TV right here. And anything for the Mac, we got one new accessory right here. We're gonna take a look at display and mount and scroll down. You will notice that we got our Belkin iPhone mount for continuity camera right here. To be honest, I think we should have gotten this in like a developer store or something in June. Oh yeah, warning you about the iPad 10, it supports the Apple Pencil 1 but has USB-C. So Apple did one of the weirdest things ever and have us use an adapter with the Apple Pencil. So that is a very strange move by Apple, just warning you about that. And with the Apple TV right here, the remote now uses USB-C, but it no longer comes with a charger. So just letting you know right there. That's all I have to say about macOS Ventura, the release candidate. Thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.